Hey everybody, welcome back. Hope you're having a great weekend. It's a sunny Sunday in Arizona. So what we're going to be doing here today is we're going to be testing and getting a cure profile worked up for this 3D Best ASA filament. This filament, and it's white, and for the record I purchased this filament with my own money. I am not sponsored by 3D Best. So this is a white filament and it claims to be an outdoor filament that can resist UV, heat, weather, and all that kind of stuff. And we are absolutely going to be testing that. I'm going to print it. Once I get a Cura profile worked up, I am going to print one of the Jeep, three, one of the Jeep taillight lenses. And we're going to see how transparent it is for use of that. And also I'm going to take those same taillight lenses printed in ABS and PLA and PETG and probably nylon and polycarbon as well just for sport and amusement and then when summer comes back around in Arizona we are going to have a UV resist heat resistant test I'll probably get some probably get some um, UV protectants like the Meguiar's headlight coating and maybe something else you guys can suggest if you can think of anything I am going to be working up a cure profile today for the enclosed Ender 3 that you see because it prints things like ABS and nylon and polycarbonate really well in the enclosure. Um, see the link in the cards above right now for my series on this Ender 3 and the modifications I've made to it. So today in this video we're just going to be testing the filament with a couple of test prints, get a cure profile worked up and just see how transparent it is and see how well it prints. So hang on and we'll get that done. Okay so here we are over in Cura where I just want to go through my settings real quick because some of you have asked me to and in case you're wondering what you're looking at is a cap for spray cans because I have a tendency of knocking spray cans over and they land on the cap and the cap bus and if I don't put another cap on them the next time I knock them over they hit the nozzle and now I have a useless can of paint or lubricant or what have you. So anyway that's what that is. And I designed this one myself. There was one on Thingiverse, but I didn't really care for the way it printed. So I made my own that would print really quickly and just be strong enough to absorb the blow because no matter what I do to it, it's going to bust when it hits the concrete anyway. So <clears throat> what you're looking at is my ABS profile that I copied and renamed to Chuck ASA AMHE. AMHE is for the all metal hot end because I have another Ender 3 that doesn't have an all metal hot end and I kind of want to keep them separate so I know which is which. So let's take a look at these settings real quick. Layer height, this has got a 0.4 nozzle. Layer height is 0.32 and this is going to be a fast print so I'm going with the, the, the thickest layer height and the thickest line width I can get for a 0.4 nozzle. So 0.32 layer height, 0.5 line width. I'm, tr I'm going for a wall count of two and a top bottom thickness of two layers. Again, I want this to print fast. If it hits the concrete, I know it's going to bust. I don't care. I just want it to, I just want it to be a sacrificial cap, and then I'll just put another one on it. Just save the nozzle and that little stem that comes out of the nozzle. Top and bottom is concentric. The rest of this is pretty standard. I've got a. There's almost no infill in this at all. Just down around that little fillet. So I set it to 50 with a grid, and. Um, Print temperature is going to be 235. That's what I use for ABS. The ASA calls for 220 to 250, and 235 is right in the middle, so we're going with my with my ABS print temperature. Build plate temperature is 70. I no normally use 90 for ABS, but the ASA called for, if I remember right, 50 to 90. So this is about in the middle. That's what I'm shooting for just as a, an initial test. Print speed is 60. Top bottom speed is 40. Uh, Print acceleration is 200, jerk is 5, retraction is on, a retraction distance of 2 millimeters. That's about as much as I really want to go with an all-metal hot end. Otherwise, I either have to use an oiler or I wind up with jams. So, uh, I have a retraction prime speed of 20. Again, another setting for the all-metal hot end to avoid jams. And uh, the rest of this, I'm using no cooling fan on it because I don't use one for ABS, so that's where we're starting here. I'm using a skirt instead of a, a raft or a brim because this is going to be inside the enclosed printer, and I don't think I need a, a brim or a raft to avoid any type of, um, any type of warpage. So we're going to slice it, and you can see that it's going to print in 39 minutes. We can do a quick preview, 
and we can see that it comes down to that little edge that little edge is just there to keep you from shoving the cap on too far and that's pretty much it i got a little fillet at the bottom just so that it's not a sharp edge if you put the cap on and smack it with your hand to put it on and that's pretty much it so we're going to print this we're going to see what we get be right back okay the printer is up to temperature the asa filament is loaded in the enclosure temp is 36.2 we are not running the ac much right now because it is cooled off in arizona so we are running the swamp cooler the evaporative cooler so temp the humidity is a little higher in the house than it would normally be so we're at 35 percent humidity i have not dried the filament i took it right out of the packaging and put it on and we're 82 degrees in this room so let's get this test print going and um, I'll speed this up and take you guys along for the ride okay it finished printing so let's take a quick look at it here it is here and so you can see it printed pretty darn nice I know it's kind of doesn't show up the defects the way like the black wheel here's one printed out of the black ABS and honestly you can see more defects in that but it's still perfectly functional and um, yeah they printed that printed very nice with no real changes to the cura profile other than I lowered the bed temp from 70 to or excuse me from 90 to 70 let's see how it works let's see if the size and shrinkage is about the same so here's my can of hairspray here is the ABS part and you push it down over and it takes a little bit of effort to put it on and a little bit of effort to get it off it doesn't fall off easily it takes a little bit of effort so let's look at the one out of ASA it is a tiny bit tighter I think a tiny bit tighter but still fits fine so anything that you use that you use ABS for and you go to use ABS or ASA outside you might have to change the shrinkage a tiny little bit but I think most of it'll fit fine let's look at the transparency of this um of this white now remember this is two layers sides and top and the sides are one millimeter thick and the top is 0.64 so let's look at it a bright light here's a bright little flashlight you will see that it um it's pretty pretty translucent for the most part let's this little flashlight also has a small you know like two millimeter red LED on it and um don't know if you can see it but it is pretty transparent through that as well so you know what I'm gonna do two more things in this video I think first I'm <laughs> first I'm going to try printing the taillight lens because the filament is already in that printer and after that I believe I will um then try the ASA on a non-enclosed printer and see what kind of um, warpage I get and if it'll print on a non-enclosed printer. I will be right back. Okay, so I have that taillight lens printed and let's kind of compare them. Obviously, when you first look at them, this one looks a lot more transparent than this one does. But um, you know what? Here's my phone and here is its um, main screen. And as you can see, this one, you pretty much read it through it. Oh, and also, I forgot to mention, I made this one with no infill, four top layers and four, no, I'm, I'm sorry, two top layers and two bottom layers. This one, I only made one top layer and one bottom layer. So this really favors this over this, although this is transparent and this is white. So let's take a look at the phone screen through this, and you can see that while you know it definitely shines through you're not going to read the phone through that here's a little flash that little flashlight with the like one or two two millimeter or three millimeter led you know what you definitely see it through it i mean you definitely can it actually diffuses it in a way better than this does so um the next step of course whoops the next step of course is to as soon as it gets dark here in a couple hours or starts to get evening take this out put it on the Jeep and see what it looks like it has gotten a little flimsy on me because I made it so thin and I got some a little layer separation over here when I grabbed it and tried to yank it off the printer I think I made it a wee bit too flimsy so this might be a good candidate for our UV heat test in the summer 
But anyway, before I do that, I want to try this stuff on a printer that is not enclosed. So I'm going to go over to my Gitek A10M and I'm going to print one of these on that just to see if it's as tough as to print on an unenclosed printer as a couple of people have told me it was. So let's do that before we go any further. You know what, and before we do that, let's make sure we're doing the right one. So let's grab a pen, or a felt pen if I can find one, and of course I can't because I can never find anything. Oh, there's one right there. And let's write on this one E for Ender 3. So you guys know that this is the Ender 3 and I don't get them mixed up. Be right back. Okay, this print on of ASA on the Gitek A10M is done. And before I take it off, it's still stuck to the to the mirror. But before I take it off, I just want to show it to you. I did take the skirt off so you'd be able to see in it better. But take a look. And remember, I have a small fillet on the ed bottom edge. But it has not warped at all. So, despite what I was told that this would warp if it wasn't enclosed, it has not warped on the Gitek A10M. And as you see, it is not enclosed. Also, the ceiling fan is running and our evaporative cooler is running as well. So it has gotten a fair amount of air across it and it has not warped. And that makes me very happy because the enclosed Ender 3 is my oldest printer and I try and spare it, you know, for things like nylon and polycarbonate. So if I could print ASA on the, um, on the unenclosed Gitek A10M, I would be a happy camper. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. As you can see, I made a few extra pieces. Uh, what do we got here? This is the one that was made on the enclosed Ender 3. I see, I'm really happy with that. It turned out, I mean, it still goes crunchy crunch, but it doesn't give away. I mean, I'm not convinced that it's quite as strong as as um, ABS, but um, nonetheless, it printed pretty decent for that. Then I went over to the... Um, to the other printer just for sport and amusement and I thought I would see and I showed you the first one I did on the Gitek A10M unfortunately it, did, it didn't warp but unfortunately as soon as I tried to pull it off the bed it did this so the next time I did it I was a little bit more careful getting it off the bed but you can see I don't know, can you see it right here it's um it's not solid so I tried one last time, and uh, for these two that, that failed, I had been using the STL that I sliced on for the Ender 3. So this time I went back in the cure and I sliced one just for the Gitek A10M. And the Gitek A10M is pretty much an Ender 3 clone that has a, a dual filament mix head on it. So anyway, this one came out a lot better. Now I screwed up in here. Because this little ridge I made, I designed that to be printed with with um, Make Overhangs Printable and Cura, and I forgot to check it. So that's kind of why that's hosed up like that. But it's a lot more solid. I'd say it's every bit as solid as the one that was printed over on the enclosed Ender 3, and it didn't warp. So maybe this filament can be printed on a, a printer that's not enclosed. And as I mentioned in the video, my overhead fan was on and the evap cooler was running so um there you go so now with these this and I didn't mark these and I should have which was my first one my first one was this one and while it printed fairly good as you can see it didn't print perfect um, plus I had changed it to two layer thicknesses and on the one, where is it? It's over here. Hang on. On the one from that I did out of the transparent PETG, I used four thicknesses. Two top layers, two bottom layers, and no infill. So I decided to go back and do that again. So I did it again, and that's... Which one is that? That is... Which one was that? That was this one. <laughs> if I've got them mixed up, I should have marked them and I didn't. And it's a lot more solid. It printed really nice. 
but I got some really rough spots here where the um, where the kind of the the concentric the concentric lines kind of met because of these these holes and I didn't really like it and typically for me rough top surfaces means not enough flow so I went back to the Ender 3 and I checked flow and I was coming up seven eight millimeters short so I bumped my um, steps per millimeter for the extruder up from 105 to 106.5 and printed another one and it's better it's quite a bit better these surfaces here are quite a bit smoother and um, if anything it's even more solid so but you will notice on these that when I let the bed completely cool I don't know if you can tell but it pops loose and it is slightly warped I mean very slightly bowed toward the center it does not warp while printing which is nice but um, after the bed cools it does pop loose and it's got a slight bit of bow to curvature to it will that matter it certainly won't in this application because it's going to go in a frame with four screws for other applications you know it might matter so next step let's take these out on the Jeep and see what they look like okay so it's about 6 p.m. in Arizona let's take a look and see which one of these is best the one out of the clear PETG is on the right and the one out of the white ASA is on the left and I don't know if you can still see it it's dusk here it's just about the time where you would turn your headlights on if you're out driving but this one on the left it's got some black some darker shadows in the print that this other one doesn't and at first I couldn't figure out what that is I thought there must be some like some of the black ABS left over but um, I finally figured out I think it's the felt pen marks I was putting on the filament when I was calibrating the flow the the steps per millimeter and the one on the right you can see out of the the transparent PETG it's just got a dull gray appearance to it so with the lights off I definitely like the the white better let's see what they look like with the lights on Well, I think the one on the left, oh, excuse me, the one on the right definitely looks cool. It definitely, the light comes through at the best, but the one on the left, the ASA, it's, um, it's perfectly fine. Here, let me hit the brake lights. Assuming the brake lights work. So anyway, that is the my little quickie review and first test of the 3D Best ASA White Outdoor Filament. I am going to definitely be testing this. I'm going to start a probably six or eight month long UV test with it with the ASA and probably two, three, four other other filament types and with some different UV protectors too. So I hope you found this. Um, oh, and as far as the this my little test and review of the ASA is concerned I like it honestly I think if I tweak my settings a bit more it would probably print as good as ABS whether it's as sturdy or not I just don't know it prints right now with about the quality I would say of PETG as far as its smoothness and blobbiness is concerned I just don't think it's as sturdy right now as ABS but anyway we'll discover that too so if I've helped you out, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.